This is a no fuss garden update and in it we're going to talk about several of the breeding crossing things I'm doing uh, for today's episode. You see how some of the summer squash there, you see how big them plants are? Well this is a butternut and this is a butternut uh, that was planted at the same time as those other squash up there and they're really dainty with small vines. And that's what I'm hoping for, a, you know, a smaller version of a butternut with almost no vine whatsoever to it. And I've got several examples of it here. And this one's starting to vine. It might, uh, a little too much, it might need to be removed. But uh, you can see down the line here that I've got some examples that are promising. Now here, I've removed to, um, either yesterday or day before, because you can see out there they're vine too much and I just run over those with a lawnmower and so that's my intent is to get a neat little butternut with a short vine this one's kind of neat because it's got a really big leaf but the line, vine's not too long yet so it's kind of weird but uh, yeah I'm keeping my eye out on those down here on the end, this is my zucchini. You may have seen in that so-called production video. And I've got three here, and I've got uh, a couple more over there in, um, in various parts of the garden that I plugged holes in. And this one, the one towards the end here, that one's vining a little much, a little too much for my taste. And it's not um, setting as, uh, well, I guess there is a squash on about every node, but um, it's just too long and aggressive. I do like the fruit on it, though, um, and the bees are out, so they're going to get these. The one next to it is my favorite so far. It's got, you see here, the vine is a little shorter, and it's got decent fruit set and little babies on every little node here. So this is the one I'm... I prefer so far and the fruits uh, is even a little more uniform uh, at least at this point where this one's a little bit concave there this one I'm not incredibly impressed with as well as this one over here especially this one over here that one's definitely gonna be taken out but we're gonna eat the fruit on it while we're waiting this one I'm not incredibly impressed with but I'm gonna let it hang the, the foliage is a little uh, wimpy and the foliage is what uh, produces the um, it takes the energy from the Sun and converts it to fruit but there is a lot of little babies and a short compact vine so I haven't given up on it yet but so far this one's the lead contender for my next generation of zucchinis and what you're looking at here is my melon it came from the eight pound melon that was a dehybridization of this very melon that's growing out here, and it's a F1 hybrid ambrosia melon. This is probably the fifth or sixth generation, I can't quite remember. But I've put little uh, bags on it here so the bees can't get to the flower because I want to cross it both with a, let's see, that, that flower hasn't opened yet. But I want to keep the bees from getting to it when it has opened. But I'm going to cross it both with my Uncle Don's yellow melon, which is either a cassava or a canary. And, um, and also back cross it to the ambrosia melon to bring in some more of the ambrosia flavor into the bigger melon here. Over here at my Uncle Don's canary slash cassava slash whatever kind of melon it is. You can see behind the little bee there, that there's another bag. I'm also taking the fruit from this one and I'm pollinating the babies with the Ambrosia F1 hybrid. And that's why these are bagged over here. Those fruit are like three rows over, over there. I've got uh, four, I mean we got one, two, four, five, six of my bell pepper that I'm working on. I'm just kind of half halfway interested in this with all the squash and tomato stuff going on. Um, but yeah, this is uh, a bell pepper I'm working on too. So um, 
That's what it looks like right now. I think this is the third generation, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll see how that goes. All right, what we have here are eggplants. The first one here is Lestat de Gandia. That's a variety from Spain. And we've got Matoyo here. Notice the difference between it and Lestata. Fairly similar shaped leaves, but of course the coloring is different. This is another Matoyo. Uh, this is a, actually, these Matoyo are camo. These are camo, sorry. First two are camo. This one and this one are Matoyo. So I've got uh, uh, these two, Matoyo and Camo, are Japanese variety. And I'm looking to create a hybrid between the two. And, um, you know, just breeding in general, I'll hybridize those two, take a look at the fruit, and see what I like, and not and decide to go where to go from there. So, eggplant's something that I'm interested in. And crossing a... Um, the Spanish variety with its coloration with a black or a dark dark uh, purple is something that interests me. This one plant is Gina Bella and it is so laden with fruit it has fallen over. Looks like there's some white fly on it too. Uh, but it turns a tangerine color when it's fully mature and um, I'm still considering this plant it's very mature. If I would have staked it up, it would have done better. But right now it's laying over and uh, it looks like it's trying to put some shoots and grow back upwards here and here. But um, yeah, a lot of fruit that I can save seed from uh, potentially to grow out. It's got a, a thicker wall like a bell pepper and very similar taste to a bell pepper. But it's a pretty color and it's a tapered fruit. I thought it would be kind of cool for stuffing and um, also using and substitute for bell pepper. So this row here is or was line three and I call it Christmas now and I crossed um, two uh, the siblings earlier this year a green globe and a yellow globe and most of that produced something I don't want to carry forward and they look something like this, uh, kind of like Madison's Cross, a green and yellow. And what I was going for was a complete yellow with a great stripe pattern. Well, the stripe pattern is going to get lost in the, the bicolor. So I'm going to steer away from bicolor this time. And almost all of them, let's see if yeah, you can see here, the fruit are bicolor. This one may, may be yellow. Um, look at this fruit here. It's got a, some green tinge to it, so I'll keep my eye on this one. Um, but yeah, there's another bicolor. And the same with all these except the one to the end here. And this one is just saying to me, I want to exist. I mean, it has uh, a very beautiful green color and stripe pattern that I really like. And this was exactly like one of the uh, siblings that I crossed. This one and the yellow one. This one was round, had the stripe pattern. The other one was kind of a little bit oval with the stripe pattern. I'll see if I can put a picture of the two side by side here. And uh, so this one is telling me it wants to exist. It is extremely aggressive and it's putting out tons and tons of baby fruit uh, all in here. I don't know if you can see here and over here. It's just everywhere. Little fruits. Back there, I don't know if you saw it in the other video, but as I was showing the baby squash back here, uh, but there was a bag where I bagged a male flower I forgot about. So I went ahead and pollinated this one. Um, this is a, a, a female fruit on there and a flower and I went ahead and pollinated it and um, covered it with a bag so the bees can't add pollen from another plant that I don't want. Now right there is a volunteer, Uncle Don's okra. And these three here, this one, 
that's one of my zucchinis. This one and this one are all Don Uncle Don's. And I am going to cross it and create a hybrid with this okra down here, which is a red okra as well. And I'm not going to talk about the variety of that just yet. But we're going to cross the two and see what kind we get. And I'll probably do a seed giveaway of the cross just to uh, let people grow that out if they want to. Now we're at 39 days um, with uh, growth from Madison's Choice here. And I, I've been curious about what the fruit would look like it, once it was more mature. And we're starting to see some more mature fruits on here. I've let them grow out some. And uh, this plant is really amazing me. I love it so far because it is so aggressive and hardy. I am noticing that when Madison's Cross is the mother, the coloration is more unique. And I'll do a side-by-side -side up here on the deck um, of the different parents and what they look like. One last look of what the No Fuss Garden main garden looks like on 12 September 2018. Let's uh, carry these squash and put them on the deck and do a little visual comparison. And by the way, I still am working on the deck. I haven't done a duck update in a while because <laughs> because a lot of life has gotten in the way and I've had to put it on hold especially trying to get a rental ready uh, that was previously rented getting it ready to sell a lot of work not just gardening stuff all right here they are on the deck table I've got them grouped and the one solo fruit there is the first of the Madison's cross which was I think a uh, week or a week and a half, maybe even longer, further behind these. But it, it has produced its first fruit on the first aggressive plant. But anyway, this section, this group right here, is when uh, Early Prolific is the mother plant. And I'm just going to hold here so you can kind of look at it. Hopefully I'll grab it with two hands here and it'll be a little steadier. And that is Early Prolific as the mother plant and uh, Madison's Cross as a pollen donor. And then we slide over here. And this is Madison's Cross as the mother plant and Early Prolific as the pollen donor. So in other words, this is Madison's Cross, the mother, Early Prolific, the mother. So I don't know if you can tell the difference. Um, I seem to see more green and more bleeding green in this compared to this. This one seems to be a little more uniform with green top and bottom, although this one's bleeding some. Um, it tends to have uh, more of a uniform green than this side over here, which is bleeding all over the place, various colors. And I think I like this more because I don't want a, in my vision, I don't want a uniform pattern if I got to have a bicolor I want it to be a unique bicolor you know what I mean instead of a uniform type bicolor and here you'll see like there's some yellow spots with green and some green coming up some tinted it's kind of almost the in-between color and uh, again just it seems to me that there's more unique green in Madison's Cross as the mom than um, Early Prolific is the bomb, which is this one. So you tell me what you think. I'd love to hear what you think on that. This is Brent, you guys. Oh, I wanted to show you kind of this as uh, compared uh, from Madison's Cross, it's apparent. And it's, it's normally shaped a little better than this. This one's a little wonky, but uh, they're normally shaped more, more like this, uh, more uniform, but it was the first one, so. And you can tell this one. I'll, I'll put a picture real quick of what the early prolific looks um, in from my early prolific here. And see, so you can tell that this took the shape and appearance and the glossiness and all that uh, more from Masson's Cross than early prolific. In fact, it's there's kind of an indicator 
of when the squash is ready to pick because it's it's a glossier color well, you can see here versus when it gets a little bigger when it starts getting a little dull compared to see the one right next to it this is more ideal to pick it than this it's kind of got a built-in indicator doesn't it <laughs> anyway this is Brent you guys we'll see you later as a parting shot I wanted to cut them open and show you what it looks like and this is a pretty good sized squash it is uh, seven inches uh, long the width is also a great indicator of overall weight compared to other squash because a lot of the size is in the width here but if you look really closely here you can see how it's starting to turn a little bit pithy like the early prolific here I guess you'd call that pithy um, when it gets to size here this one even comes up a little further so I'm being absolutely honest with you this is an early prolific um, genetic input in there and it may have brought some of that wonderful taste actually I'm not sure if that's the case but it may have brought some of that wonderful taste that makes early prolific so amazing I don't know that I can tell you this is a phenomenally tasting squash but if you get them as they start to get a little smaller you can see the pith it's not do as dominant yet and this parent here though is Masson's Cross where this one's early prolific and that might have something to do with it too but we'll keep evaluating and um, I know a couple people have asked about what they look like when they get to size so this is um, a size I would never let it get beyond this because if you do that they they quit making squash because they think they have a seed squash on so yep I'm leaning toward Madison's Cross as the parent over Madison's Choice it just looks better to me anyway this is Brent yet again we'll see you later well that wraps up this video if you guys enjoyed the video please comment like and subscribe in order to subscribe all you got to do is click the button here we'll put a check mark next to it if you want to get notification the next time I make a video click on the bell here check here and hit save you guys take care